Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1138. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about the big rally today that is causing the stock market to finally be in positive territory. Will it continue? What's causing it? We're going to talk about all of that today. So this stock market is very data-driven right now. And the reason that it's data-driven is because the Fed has told us they are data driven. So we're looking very closely at all the numbers that come in to anticipate what the Fed is going to do and how they will interpret that information. So the numbers that came in today was the December jobs report and a manufacturing survey. And both of them showed signs that inflation may be cooling after all of the Federal Reserve's interest rate hikes. There was a December non-farm payrolls report that showed that the economy added 223,000 jobs last month, which was more than were expected. Most economists that were polled by the Dow Jones expected about 200,000 jobs to be added. So there were 23,000 additional jobs than were expected, which was a great surprise. Also, wages didn't grow as fast as expected. They increased 0.3% for December, where most economists were anticipating 0.4%. So Michael Arone, Chief Investment Strategist at State Street Global Advisors said all investors care about is that the data suggests inflation is moving towards the Fed's target. That's all investors care about and average hourly earnings suggest inflation continues to slow. They are excited about that. Well, I agree with him. These inflation numbers, again coming in lower inflation for the last couple of months, now are showing a good trend that the peak of inflation seems to be behind us, and that's very good news. But the other thing that we have to worry about is the strong jobs market. And that's where the Fed has told us they're still going to continue to raise interest rates because that market is so strong. The other news we got was the ISM's Non-Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index that showed that the services industry contracted in December. And that means maybe the Fed's rate hikes might be working to slow the economy. And if so, maybe they don't have to raise interest rates as much in the future. How has the Fed commented on all of this? Well, Richmond Federal Reserve President Thomas Barkin said that the central bank has to keep working to bring down inflation, but can do it with a little less intensity. He said, quote, we still have work to do, Inflation is too high, and we will need to stay on the case until it is sustainably back to our 2% target. We have forecasted additional rate increases this year. So the Fed has also commented that they think that their benchmark funds rate will rise past 5%, from the current 4.25% to 4.5% target range. So they're still anticipating more interest rate hikes, unfortunately. But we're getting closer to the end of that. And because the markets always look ahead in anticipation, it's starting to already move markets up. When we look at what was the strongest part of the economy, in December, healthcare and social services gained the most jobs, followed by leisure and hospitality. Now the question is, will we have a recession or will we not have a recession? Some people are saying it's going to be a hard landing, meaning yes, we'll have a recession. Other people are predicting a soft landing, like Goldman Sachs, who's saying they think the job numbers are consistent with a soft landing, meaning probably not a recession or very slight if we do have a recession. So Goldman Sachs chief economist Jan Hatzius said the U.S. may be able to avoid a recession. They said, quote, we're growing at a below trend pace that's necessary to rebalance the economy. Wage growth is gradually decelerating. Price inflation is pretty quickly decelerating. I think that should be encouraging for a soft landing. 
Now, while that's surprising to some people because all we've been hearing the media talk about is recession, 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 the numbers and the data, again, are showing us that the economy is pretty resilient. The thing that people are missing who are predicting a hard landing is that we've had four and a half million new jobs added last year. That's the second strongest year ever recorded. 2022 was second only to 2021 when there were 6.7 million jobs created. The only thing close to that was back in 1946 when soldiers were returning to civilian work after World War II. So the jobs market has been very strong for 2021 and 2022, which could mean that we get to a softer landing than what was initially expected. And that's good news. So what is the Fed going to do and when is their next meeting? Well, the Fed's next meeting is January 31st and February 1st. So while some economists are saying there's going to be a 0.5% interest rate hike or half a percent, the futures market is actually putting the odds more at a quarter of a percent or 25 basis points as the hike. Peter Bookvar, chief investment officer at Bleakley Financial Group, said market expectations did not change after the jobs report, and the Fed Fund's futures contract for February was pricing in another 0.32% interest rate hike. He said it's pricing 100% chance of a quarter percent interest rate hike and a 30% chance for an additional quarter percent interest rate hike. The peak Fed funds rate is still at 5% for July, he said. The market is still expecting the Fed to go another 0.6% to 0.7% hike in interest rates. He said the end point for the Fed matters more than if it raises by a quarter of a percent or a half a percent when it next meets. So he's saying it's looking ahead, saying when are the hikes going to be over? Because if we can get the Fed to finish hiking interest rates, that's likely where we're going to see the market anticipate good news ahead. And what might that mean for the market? Well, it could mean a very strong rebound. Typically, the stock market does rebound strongly following a year of big losses. Like I told you on the last podcast, the average annual return after a year of losses like we had in 2022, is about a 15% return the following year. And when we look back in history since 1936, of the nine prior years that had double-digit losses, seven of those had double-digit gains following that negative year. Well, I can't guarantee that this is going to be a good year for the stock market. It is looking like things are lining up more in that direction. If we have a softer landing than we were expecting, if we have inflation coming down more than was hoped for, and if we're closer to the end of the interest rate hikes, things can be looking up pretty quickly here. So all eyes are on the Federal Reserve for the end of the month. We'll hear what they say at their meeting. We'll continue to watch the data and that will let us know what the Fed is likely to do. But the odds are we're within maybe half a percent of where the Fed may hike interest rates. And if the Fed can get to the point of stopping their interest rate hikes, that would be great news for the stock market. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.